Die Zeit wird alle Spuren verwischen. Aber das werde ich zu verhindern wissen. Bin ich doch der Einzige, der es vollbringen kann. Er war mir Gönner und Freund. Und es muss meine heilige Pflicht sein, diesen Großen seiner Zeit nicht dem Vergessen anheimzugeben. Viele Jahre sind seit dem denkwürdigen Weihnachtstag vergangen, an dem Karl, mein König, im heiligen Rom zum Kaiser gekrönt wurde. When Charlemagne was crowned emperor on the 25th of December 800, he was at the peak of his power. He ruled a realm that encompassed almost the whole of Europe. Charlemagne was the most powerful ruler of his time. Even the Pope in Rome was intimidated by him. Only one person can tell the story of Charlemagne's life firsthand, namely his former comrade in arms, the court scholar Einhard. Verzeiht, Meister, ich bin zu spät. Noch nicht einmal die Stunden kennst du. Ich frage mich, Johannes, ob du der Aufgabe gewachsen bist, die ich dir zugedacht habe. Ich habe mir vorgenommen, so kurz wie möglich über das private und öffentliche Leben und natürlich auch über die Taten des trefflichen und hochberühmten Königs Karl zu berichten. 20 Jahre habe ich bei ihm am Hof verbracht, habe sein Vertrauen gewonnen und seine Geheimnisse zu wahren gelernt. Aber merke dir, über alles, was nicht zur Niederschrift kommt, hast du zu schweigen. Ja, Meister Einhard. Wenn es euer Wille ist, sagt mir, was ich schreiben soll. Das Werk soll benannt werden Vita Caroli, das Leben Karls. Years after Charlemagne's death, his court scholar Einhard wrote the most famous medieval biography of a ruler. It depicts Charlemagne as superhuman, as a being of light. But was he really like that? What's myth and what's reality? This story starts in turbulent times. Pepin, Charlemagne's father, wanted to be king of the Franks, but without having inherited the crown. Es wird schon hell. Ihr habt die ganze Nacht gewacht, Herr. The ambitious Pepin was hoping for a son in order to be able to found a dynasty. Es ist ein Junge. When the longed for son and heir was born in April 748, four years had passed since his marriage to Bertrada. She became very anxious after her marriage that she didn't conceive a child. And her whole position, of course, not to mention her husband's position, depended on having a child and having a, a boy child. She apparently, she prayed rather desperately to become fertile, to become pregnant. And she did then have Charlemagne. And I think the relief that she must have felt at that moment was extraordinary. Herr, es ist ein gesunder, hübscher Junge. Jetzt beginnt meine und eure Zukunft. Mein Sohn soll auf den Namen Karl getauft werden, wie mein Vater. Und er wird einer der Großen werden. Heil und Gottes Segen 
auf den kommenden König. The realm of the Franks, which consisted of many small principalities, had been governed by the Merovingians for generations. But Charlemagne's father, Pepin, had good arguments with which he persuaded the princes to venture a revolution under his leadership. Pepin wanted to rule a huge realm. Under the Merovingian dynasty, the territory of the Franks had steadily expanded. In addition to the original settlement areas on the Rhine and the Moselle, large parts of modern-day France had also been incorporated. Over the course of three centuries, the Frankish Empire had become a major power in Central Europe. Aus Neustrien kommt die Nachricht, dass auch in Burgund und Alemannien sich ein großer Teil der Fürsten auf Pippins Seite schlagen werden. Ich danke euch, dass ihr so schnell kommen konntet. Die Überläufer formieren sich zu einer großen Gruppe. Es sind nur noch wenige, die König Hilderich auch weiter folgen wollen. Bald wird niemand mehr meinen Triumph aufhalten. Aber nur ein mächtiger Verbündeter an meiner Seite wird alle Gegner zum Schweigen bringen. Abt Vollrath, Abt Burkhard, seid ihr bereit für eine Mission nach Rom? The Pope wants to tip the scales in Pepin's favor. Pepin wanted the revolution to take place with his blessing. Mein lieber Abt Vollrath, Abt Burkhard, nun, nach reiflicher Überlegung, habe ich für die Zukunft des Frankenreichs also folgende Entscheidung getroffen. Es ist besser, dass der König heißt, der die Macht hat, als der, dem keinerlei königliche Gewalt mehr verblieben ist. Daher soll Kraft apostolische Autorität, der Hausmeier Pippin, nun König der Franken werden. Eure Heiligkeit, ihr habt für das Wohl der Franken entschieden und sicherlich nicht zu eurem Schaden. The Pope in Rome had become a highly visible authority in the Frankish Empire. Pepin seems to have had the need to get a legitimation beyond that of the Frankish nobility and the Frankish bishops, in order to strengthen his political ambitions. And so he didn't have much of an option. Turning to the Pope was the obvious choice. So wurde also auf Geheiß des römischen Papstes Karls Vater Pippin zum neuen König der Franken erhoben. Dem letzten merowingischen Herrscher ließ Pippin den Kopf scheren und verband ihn auf Lebenszeit in ein Kloster. Und nun schreibt weiter Johannes. Dem alten König war zuvor sowieso nichts anderes übrig geblieben als sich mit seinem Titel zu begnügen und mit wallendem Haupthaar und ungeschnittenem Bart auf dem Thron zu sitzen und den Herrscher zu spielen. <lacht> Pippin sollte auch weiterhin mit großem Geschick vorgehen. Er versprach dem Papst, Rom gegen alle Feinde zu verteidigen. Und so wurde er zum Schutzherrn der Kirche. Im Gegenzug empfingen er, sein Sohn Karl und sein zweitgeborener Sohn, den er Karlmann nannte, die päpstliche Königssalbung. The new Carolingian dynasty now had two heirs to the throne, Charlemagne and his brother Karloman. Even as adolescents, they saw themselves more as rivals than brothers. The younger and cunning Carloman often had the upper hand in contests. 
That must have been humiliating for Charlemagne. Ich habe euch hier versammelt, damit ihr Zeugen meines letzten Willens werdet. Das Frankenreich will ich gerecht unter meinen beiden Söhnen aufteilen. Ich bitte euch, seid ihnen genauso treu ergeben, wie ihr es mir gewesen seid. Ich bestimme also, du Karl, du sollst im Norden von Neustrien und Austrien und im westlichen Aquitanien herrschen. Dir, mein geliebter Sohn, schreibe ich den Osten von Aquitanien, Burgund, die Provence, Alemannien und den Süden von Neustrien und Austrien zu. Dieser Beschluss ist unumstößlich. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. At first glance, the division of the empire seems balanced. Nevertheless, Charlemagne must have felt at a disadvantage. His section stretched around that of his brother in a semicircle, and that meant significantly longer distances. The division of the empire that Pepin devised for his sons is strange because it's not geographically coherent. Charlemagne's territories surrounded Carloman's inner semicircle, and both of them got a portion of Aquitaine, which had been a very sought after area since the time of the Merovingians. One reason for this strange division was definitely that Pepin wanted to force his sons to get along. But that's exactly what they were unwilling and unable to do. They had a clear rivalry about being the more dominant ruler in the empire. The tombs of the Frankish kings are in the famous Basilica of Saint-Denis. Charlemagne's father, Pepin, was also buried here next to his wife, Bertrada. When he divided the empire between his sons, he couldn't have suspected what consequences this would have. So übernahm nach Pippins Tod jeder das Gebiet des Reiches, das ihm durch väterlichen Beschluss zugefallen war. Stell dir vor, an einem und demselben Tag fanden die Krönungen statt. Aber jeder der Brüder hatte dafür eine Kirche in seinem eigenen Reichsteil gewählt. Und dann, tja, der Friede zwischen den beiden konnte nur mit größter Schwierigkeit aufrechterhalten werden. Schon kurz nach den Krönungsfeierlichkeiten war der Streit um die Vorherrschaft zwischen ihnen entbrannt. Und waren es nicht auch die Frauen, die geschickt begannen, Zwietracht zu sehen. Was gab es denn so Wichtiges zu besprechen? Was ich meinen Bruder sogar eher bemüht. Sei nicht feindselig, Karl. Und lass dir gesagt sein. Selbst wenn du König bist, ist die Macht noch nicht auf deiner Seite. Mit dir an meiner Seite, Mutter. Habe ich doch meinen kleinen Bruder nicht zu fürchten. 
Ich werde zu dir stehen, wie ich es immer getan habe. Aber unterschätze deinen Bruder nicht. Er hat starke Verbündete. Relations between royal princes were always likely to be tense and difficult. But in this case, the evidence is very clear that that was so. And I wonder if it went back to this uh, special feeling that she had for her eldest boy. Uh, she certainly tried to make peace between her two sons when, they, when it became clear after their father's death that they weren't getting on very well. But I think the one that she preferred was, was Charles. Thronfolger stünde dir wahrlich gut zu passen. Es wäre doch eine Schande, würde dein Bruder in diesen Dingen schneller sein als du. Ich habe spannende Neuigkeiten. Nach allem, was ich weiß, wird auch Karlmann bald eine Gemahlin an seiner Seite haben. Das Gemach teilt sie schon mit ihm. Sei still. Mach dir darum keine Gedanken mehr. Ja, war bis kurz vor du Alif. Aber vor der Armee eures Bruders ist weit und breit keine Spur zu sehen. There was a rebellion on the Empire's borders. In such an event, the plan was for the two brothers to combine their military efforts. Aquitaine, which had been conquered by King Pepin, was rebelling against the Frankish occupiers under its former ruler, Hunald. 500 kilometers from the heart of the crisis, Charlemagne was expecting his brother in Montcontour to go to battle with him against Aquitaine. But Carloman didn't show up at the agreed meeting place. Ohne euren militärischen Beistand wird euer Bruder gegen Hunold ins offene Messer rennen. Das ist der Plan. Er wird alleine ziehen. Es gebietet ihm schon seine Ehre und die unseres seligen Vaters. Und was genau gedenkt ihr zu tun, wenn er unterliegt? Hey, ich hole Besuch. Was verschafft mir die Ehre? Seit Menschengedenken ziehen fränkische Könige gemeinsam in die Schlacht. Und auch wir beide haben auf dieses heilige Gesetz unsere Treue geschworen. Wenn dir dieses Gesetz so heilig ist, lieber Bruder, Dann mach es so wie ich. Schick deine Kriegerfürsten wieder nach Hause. Um aller Welt einen Grund zu geben, über uns zu lachen. Du hast mir deinen Beistand zugesichert. Hast du das vergessen? Nun, ich habe mich eben eines anderen besonnen. Auf dein Wohl, Bruder. Du wirst die Schmach schon überstehen. Holländer Verräter. Siehst du? Du hättest genug Kraft, mich sogar zu töten. Allein der Mut dazu, der fehlt dir. Es bleibt unklar, warum. It remains unclear why Carloman refused to help. Did he want to put his brother into a difficult position? Did he have an alliance with Aquitaine? Maybe there were old hostilities between him and his brother. The sources don't really make it clear, but it's certain that after the quarrel between the two, Charlemagne was on his own. Charlemagne was in the trap his brother had laid for him. Calling off the military campaign would have been a display of weakness. Risking it on his own would have been a huge gamble because Charlemagne couldn't afford a defeat. A king only remains king when the luck of battle and therefore God is on his side. Maybe Charlemagne threw himself into such an adventure with confidence because he possessed the latest weapons and technology of war. 
That at least is suggested by a valuable document in the monastic library of St. Gallen. It's one of the oldest and largest libraries in the world. A precious manuscript from the time of the Carolingians is kept here. The Golden Psalter, written in gold ink. It depicts the Franks attacking with bows and arrows, and also armed with swords and shields. The soldiers are wearing chainmail and scale armor for protection, highly sophisticated equipment for the time. This army that Charlemagne fields is well equipped and more importantly, the part of the army which the enemy sees first is an iron army. It is terrifying. An experiment will reveal the speed and penetrative power of an arrow. The arrow is filmed with a high-speed camera for this purpose. A soap torso with a density comparable to that of the human body will serve as a dummy. The distance between the archer and the dummy is exactly 10 meters. At 3,000 frames per second, the camera records the bow shots. Bisher auf dem Torso auftrifft. So what do we have for the speed of the arrow now? Uh, well, we calculated the 45 meters per second for the arrow, and this translates to 162 kilometers per hour. That's fast. What protection did the chainmail and scale armor afford? Were they the real secret weapon of the Frankish army? The male armor, which is the most important form of armor that they used at this time, made of interlocking rings, was primarily designed as a protection against swords, spears, cutting weapons. It was not very effective against arrows, as we see in our tests, but it will stop some arrows. The chainmail alone rarely wards off arrows but it reduces the impact so much that the deadly arrowhead can be stopped safely by the doublet below. Even arrows are thwarted by the Frankish scale armor, however. In staggered columns, the Frankish army penetrated deep into the Aquitaine territory, defeating the enemy warriors, usually through fatal attacks on the flanks. causes the uh, military successes of Charlemagne is in fact quite simply money. He rules over a state with an expanding economy. This economy has industry, small industry but important because it enables them to manufacture large quantities of weaponry and armor.
After this victory, Charlemagne declared the whole of Aquitaine his, thereby annexing the area his brother Carloman had originally possessed. Charlemagne legitimized his reign through his successful military campaign. He showed his entourage that he was a soldier king who could be victorious, and that's always good for him as king. His brother might not have thought about what would happen if his older brother won. He, as the younger brother, would be at a disadvantage. We could speculate that it would maybe have been better for Carloman to have helped his brother pacify Aquitaine. Karl nannte seinen Sohn nach seinem Vater Pippin. Und natürlich war er überglücklich, da er damit seinen Machtvorsprung vor seinem Bruder hervorheben konnte. Aber wenige Monate später passierte etwas Ungeheuerliches. Karlmann taufte seinen erstgeborenen Sohn ebenfalls auf den Namen Pippin. Das war eine große Provokation seinem Bruder gegenüber. Du musst wissen, dass Karl die Unfreundlichkeit und Eifersucht seines Bruders die ganze Zeit über mit großer Geduld ertrug. Tja, man wunderte sich sogar allgemein darüber, dass er deswegen nie zornig aufbrauste. Er regelte seine Angelegenheiten vielmehr auf seine Weise. Oder vielleicht sollte ich besser sagen, auf einmal begann seine Mutter seine Angelegenheiten zu regeln. Auf ihre Weise. Charlemagne's mother, Bertrada, secretly made her way across the Alps to Italy. Her destination was the palace of the Lombard king Desiderius in Pavia. Bertrada wanted to forge an alliance with the former enemy of the Franks, thereby securing Charlemagne's kingdom. The sources give us very little information about the role of women at the time. But in Bertrada's case, she developed an unusual dominance and held the strings of politics in her hands. Ihr seid, wenn ich mir erlauben darf, eine wahrlich sehr bemerkenswerte Frau. Ich danke euch, werte Desiderius. Ihr dürft unser Treffen durchaus so eröffnen. Nun, es erstaunt uns doch immer wieder, wie weit entfernt das stolze Reich der Langobarden ist. Vom fränkischen Hof. Dann sollten wir endlich etwas dagegen unternehmen. Wenn ich euch vorstellen darf, meine Tochter... This princess was to marry Charlemagne, thereby making the Lombards allies and putting pressure on his brother's realm, controlling him from the north, south and west. That was the plan. The only problem was that the Pope was distrustful of the allegiance between Rome's archenemy, the Lombards, and its protector, the Franks. Pope Stephen III believed the hand of the devil was at work in Bertrada's plan. he wrote directly to the king of the Franks. Schon im Paradiese hat sich der Satan eines Weibes bedient, um zur Übertretung der göttlichen Gesetze zu verleiten. Dieses Mittels bedient sich derselbe jetzt wieder. Dieser Heiratsplan ist eine teuflische Eingebung. Das edle und herrliche Volk der Franken darf sich nicht durch die Verbindung mit den stinkenden Langobarden beflecken. Der heilige Petrus selbst beschwört den fränkischen König bei dem schreckvollen Tag des letzten Gerichts, nicht die Tochter des Langobardenkönigs zu heiraten. But Bertrada asserted herself. Charlemagne divorced his wife, Himmeltrud, and banished her to a life in a convent, as was customary for such cases at the time. 
Über Himmeltrud wissen wir leider sehr wenig. Wir kennen auch Unfortunately, we know very little about Himmeltrud. We don't even know the family she came from, but it's likely that this family wasn't very powerful because we know nothing about a protest against Himmeltrud's banishment, which took place even though she had given Charlemagne a son by the name of Pepin, the later Pepin the Hunchback. And the sources also contain no information about what happened to Himmeltrud after her banishment. Karl, deine Braut hat einen langen Weg hinter sich und möchte dir ihre Aufwartung machen. Ich hoffe, eure Reise war nicht zu beschwerlich. Ich erwarte euch zum Abendmahl. That marriage to the Lombard princess seemed very useful. The Lombard king had married off his daughters to other prestigious people, and uh, Charlemagne was sort of buying into an already existing uh, constellation of power. It was Carloman's move. zustimmen und ihr werdet ein neues starkes Bündnis besiegen. Doch Karl und insbesondere Bertrada wollten es nicht zu einem Bündnis zwischen Karlmann und dem Papst kommen lassen. Und dazu kam es auch nicht. Denn was soll ich dir sagen? Schon wieder begann Bertrada ihre Fäden zu spinnen. Und schließlich zog sie den Papst auf ihre Seite. Karlmann soll darüber so erbost gewesen sein, dass er sogar plante, gegen Rom zu marschieren. Gegen die Stadt des Apostelfürsten Petrus wollte er zu Felde ziehen. Ganz recht. Und in diesem Fall wäre es sicherlich zum lange schon drohenden Bruderkrieg gekommen. Aber die Vorsehung sollte anders entscheiden. Gottes Wege sind manchmal wahrhaft unergründlich. Before war could break out, fate intervened. At the young age of 20, Carloman died under mysterious circumstances. For Charlemagne, the death of his unloved brother opened up unforeseen opportunities.
Charlemagne would soon declare himself sole ruler. Carloman's unexpected death was a gift for Charlemagne. I'm not entirely sure it was all above board, but speculation is one facet of historical work. The other is the certain statements of our witnesses. And they don't permit any suggestion of any intervention by Charlemagne with regard to his brother's death. Carloman's widow, Gerberger, formulated a daring plan to prevent Charlemagne from getting his hands on her sons as she fled across the Alps. Her destination was, of all places, the court of the Lombard king, Desiderius. Gerberga fled to Italy, presumably because she hoped that, protected by the Lombards, she would be able to get away from her ever more powerful brother-in-law. But she was seriously wrong. It took Charlemagne two years to march to Italy, but then all hope was lost for all of Carloman's heirs. The days at court were also numbered for Charlemagne's Lombard wife. Sie hat schon viel zu lange an meiner Tafel gesessen. Ich habe einen Fehler gemacht. Ich hätte dieser Ehe niemals zustimmen dürfen. Mit der Familie deiner Frau haben wir einen starken Verbündeten an unserer Seite. Was soll das also bedeuten, Karl? Das bedeutet, dass ich als König aller Franken von nun an meine Entscheidungen alleine treffen werde und deine Langobardin geht zu ihrem stinkenden Volk zurück. Charlemagne returned to the politics of his father and turned away from his mother's politics, although we don't know what Charlemagne's opinion about it actually was up until 771. He was able to act differently because things changed so fundamentally as a result of Carloman's death. Bist du dir nicht im Klaren darüber, dass das Krieg mit Desiderius heißt? Dann wird es wohl so kommen. Hat nicht mein Vater schon gegen die Langobarden und für den Papst gestritten? Ach, Zeiten deines Vaters sind vorbei. Wir brauchen keinen Krieg, sondern Allianzen, Karl. Das siehst du falsch, Mutter. Aus welchem Grund ist denn meine Schwägerin zu Desiderius geflohen? Sie denkt doch, dass er ihren Söhnen, und zwar hinter meinem Rücken, zur Krone verhelfen wird. Ich glaube nicht, dass es die Absicht deiner Schwägerin ist. Der Krieg, so Mutter hat schon längst begonnen und du wirst nicht mehr mitentscheiden. His relationships with Italy were changing. He wanted an alliance with the papacy and he wanted to break with the Lombards. But he also needed to marry uh, a woman of the aristocracy, which was much more normal than a foreign marriage. Um, he wanted uh, to, to marry into a powerful family who would provide um, military and political support for him. And so Charlemagne married Hildegard, the daughter of a count from an aristocratic Alemannic family. He'd long since sent his Lombard wife back to her father. During the following 11 years of marriage, Hildegard gave birth to nine children. Hildegard Verwandte im Reich. 
Hildegard had relatives in Carloman's realm, which meant that her father was a great support for Charlemagne with regard to Carloman's territory. In addition, Hildegard, who was 14 at the time, must have had a very special charm because she managed to reconcile the enemies of this marriage at court and to become a very popular queen, as far as we can tell. The Lombard king Desiderius, humiliated by Charlemagne, went to Rome to play his last trump. Eure Heiligkeit. Ich vermute, ihr habt vom Ungemach gehört, dass Karlmanns Söhnen widerfahren ist. Ihr meint, dass unser Mitverlaub etwas ungestümer Karl die armen Knaben in der Thronfolge übergangen hat. Er hat sie ihrer rechtmäßigen fränkischen Krone beraubt. Nun, welche Rolle obliegt mir in diesem Spiel? Eure Heiligkeit, mit Verlaub, ihr seid der Einzige, der über die Rechtmäßigkeit der Krone verfügt. Ich bitte euch, salbt jene Knaben zu den rechtmäßigen Thronfolgern Karlmanns. Sie sind seine Söhne. Und wie ich gehört habe, habt ihr sie in eurer Obhut und wollt einen Vorteil daraus ziehen? Gut, ich werde darüber befinden. Doch solch ein Urteil braucht Zeit. Sicherlich war es eine Herausforderung. It would have been a big challenge to Charlemagne if the sons of his deceased brother had been given a legitimation by the Pope. Durch den Papst bekommen sollten. Das konnte er sich eigentlich nicht. He couldn't put up with that. After his brother's death, he claimed to be the sole ruler of the Frankish Empire. That the Pope might possibly give others a legitimation to the Frankish throne was definitely a reason for him to intervene. War für ihn sicherlich ein Grund zum Eingreifen. In May 772, war with the Lombards seemed inevitable. But Charlemagne's behavior towards his brother's sons had angered many princes in the empire. The situation was tense when Charlemagne asked them to attend the military review as he did every year. First Gerald. Der getreue Gefolgsmann meines Bruders. Und nun wie Gottes wollte der eure. Und dazu mein neuer Schwager. Kommt, lasst uns keine Zeit verlieren. Wie ich sehe, sind unsere Reihen nicht geschlossen. Das betrübt mich. Besonders wenn fränkische Fürsten ihre Loyalität nicht ihrem eigenen König, sondern einem dreckigen Langobarden angedeihen lassen. Aber die Langobarden sollen uns jetzt nicht kümmern. Kümmern wir uns lieber um die Sachsen. When Charlemagne sent his Lombard wife back home, he knew that it would mean war with the Lombards. He also knew that there would be resistance to a war with the Lombards in his own ranks, from his mother, for example. He had to get rid of that resistance so the Franks could fight the Lombards. Being the soldier king that he was, he used the interim period for a campaign against the Saxons, because a king of that time always had to be at war. That was his main job. Charlemagne's father, Pepin, had also fought against the Germanic Saxons. Now the sun was taking over. For years, the Saxons had been invading the north of the Frankish Empire. But unlike his father, Charlemagne went a step further when he decided in 772 to advance with great brutality into Saxon territory, all the way to the upper Weser River.
The fight against the Saxons, who in contrast to the Franks weren't Christians, meaning they weren't baptized, must have had a religious undercurrent right from the start. Religion was part of the political ethnic identity that had to be broken if necessary if such a people were to be subjected, for example. Military submission and the assertion of Christianity in Saxony were inseparable for Charlemagne. They were two sides of the same coin for him. Who were these Saxons and where did they live? It is said the imposing Eckstein stones in the Egger Hills were a cult site of the Saxons, who as Germanic pagans worshipped their gods with animal sacrifices. Physicist Clemens Vorder is trying to find out whether these man-made caves really were used by the Saxons in Charlemagne's day. Traces of a fire were found here years ago. The question now is, when was there fire here? Clemens Vorder is hoping to get an answer by using thermoluminescence dating. He's taking a sample to the laboratory. There aren't many records about the Saxons' religious rituals, but fire was considered sacred in all heathen cults, as was the blood of the sacrificial animals with which the priests tried to placate the angry gods. Clemens Vorder is dating the sample with the optically stimulated luminescence. That allows him to determine when the quartz grains in the stone were heated for the last time. It takes many days to prepare the sample and perform the measurements. The results reveal that the fire in the caves of the Extown stones must have burned between the 8th and the 16th centuries, thus including the period of the Saxon-Frankish Wars. Whether they really were ritual fires can't be determined anymore since there are no further archaeological clues. But there are further clues around the Extown stones which suggest that this place had a special significance. Many believe that the legendary Irminsul could have stood here during the time of Charlemagne. The Irminsul was the most important object of Saxon worship. It is said to have been a massive tree that supported the heavens. A Christian relief was carved into the exterior wall of the main cave in the 16th century. It depicts a deposition from the cross the relief contains a striking, unusual detail. It's a forked branch that resembles the descriptions of the Irminsul. Does the relief contain a clue about whether the most sacred Saxon religious object once stood here? That would explain why Charlemagne fought such a bitter war for this territory. The person who had control of the sacred Saxon site, Charlemagne hoped, would also be in control of the Saxons. He had no idea that this fight would go on for decades.